Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now quick question, if I say the word debt, what comes to your mind? Is it a dark cloud looming over you? Or is it a misunderstood tool that could potentially turn your financial life around? Don't worry, this isn't a horror movie. Think of it more like a detective story, where we sift through myths, half-truths, and outright fantasies to get to the bottom of what debt really means for your life. Most of us glance at it, make a confused face, and then continue on hoping for the best. But you don't want to hope for the best with something that has the power to make or break your financial future. That's why today we're demystifying five colossal debt myths. Myths that you probably believed were gospel truths. We'll bust those myths and replace them with actionable insights you can use, well, immediately. Why should you care? By the end of this video, you'll be empowered with a fresh perspective that'll turn you from a debt novice into a debt ninja. Yep, you'll be slicing through misconceptions and making financially savvy choices quicker than you can say, is that interest rate compound or simple? But hang on a second. Before we get into this myth-busting ride, do me a quick favor. If you're serious about turning the tables on debt, or you just enjoy life hacks that actually mean something, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the time. Trust me, your future financially savvy self will thank you. Ready to lift the veil and see debt for what it truly is? Let's jump in. All right, folks, let's dive right into our first myth, a classic one that you've probably heard more times than you've heard someone say, new year, new me. The idea that all debt is bad debt. Sounds like conventional wisdom, doesn't it? But hold your horses because this is not entirely true and I can almost hear your collective gasps from here. So, let's paint a scenario. Imagine you've got two friends. One decides to borrow money to buy a flashy boat because, well, he thinks it'll really up his social game at the marina. The other friend is a bit more calculated. She takes out a loan to start her own business. Now ask yourself, are both these people sailing in financially troubled waters? No pun intended. The answer is a bit more nuanced than a simple yes or no. That's because debt isn't some one-size-fits-all villain that's out to get you. There's what we call good debt and bad debt. Good debt can be something like an investment that will grow in value over time or generate long-term income. We're talking student loans for a valuable degree, mortgages for property that will appreciate, and so on. Bad debt? That's the stuff that quickly depreciates in value and doesn't provide a return on your investment. Sorry to break it to you, but our friend with the boat might need to reevaluate some life choices. Now, a personal story here to drive this home. When I was just starting my financial journey, I took a loan to invest in a promising venture. My family thought I'd lost a few screws. A loan to invest? Are you out of your mind? They asked. Well, three years later, that investment doubled in value, and I paid off the loan within the first year. I'm not saying it's a strategy for everyone, but it's a prime example of what leveraging good debt can look like. So your action step after this video? Take a hard look at any debts you have. Are they helping you build toward your future, or are they dragging you down like a lead balloon? Plan accordingly. Good debt can be a tool to propel you forward, but only if you wield it wisely. Can we please stop treating all debt like it's the root of all evil? If managed correctly, it's more like your Swiss army knife in the financial wilderness. Super versatile and incredibly handy. Just make sure you know how to use each tool, or you might end up using the corkscrew when you really needed the scissors. All right, if the first myth was a wake-up call, this next one is your morning coffee, so let's get into it. Myth number two, paying off debt should be your first priority. Now this sounds sensible. First, let's unpack this. The pay off all debt immediately mantra can actually lead you into some financial pitfalls. Imagine you're so focused on paying off your debt that you neglect to build any savings or invest for your future. You're essentially running on a financial treadmill, making lots of effort, but not actually moving forward. Why is this a myth, you ask? Well, for starters, not all debts are created equal. Some debts have low interest rates and offer tax benefits, like mortgage debt or some student loans. In cases like these, you might get a better return on investment by putting your extra cash into the stock market, a side business, or another opportunity, rather than aggressively paying off the debt. And let's not forget, having cash reserves is crucial. 
The last thing you want is to have zero savings when life throws one of its delightful curveballs at you. For example, a friend of mine was so obsessed with paying off her student loans that she didn't save a dime. Then her car broke down, and guess what? She had to take on more debt to fix it. Talk about taking one step forward and two steps back. Your takeaway from this section? Balance is key. Absolutely make your debt payments, but also build your savings and look for investment opportunities that can offer you a better return. You don't want to win the battle against debt, but lose the war on financial independence. So yes, be committed to removing that debt burden, but don't let it blind you to other financial opportunities or necessities. Remember, financial wellness is not a one-track journey. There are multiple paths you can take, and paying off debt is just one of them. Now that we've cleared the air on paying off debt as your sole mission, let's shift gears to another piece of fiction that circulates like a bad rumor. Myth number three. Credit cards are the enemy. Ah, credit cards. To some, they're a ticket to lavish vacations and to others, a one-way street to financial ruin. The truth? It's neither, and it's time to set the record straight. Credit cards are not inherently evil, as much as some financial pundits make them out to be. Think of credit cards as a chainsaw. In the hands of a skilled carpenter, it's an invaluable tool. In the hands of someone who doesn't know what they're doing? Well, let's just say it can get messy real quick. The issue with this myth is that it leaves you thinking that steering clear of credit cards will solve all your problems. Let's debunk that. Credit cards can actually be a strong ally in building a robust credit history. A good credit score can be your ticket to favorable loan terms, better interest rates, and can even make you more appealing to landlords and employers. It's kind of like your financial GPA. The better it is, the more doors it opens for you. I know someone who never had a credit card because he thought it would lead him into temptation. When he decided it was time to buy a house, he couldn't get a loan approved because he had no credit history. It's like being a great actor but never auditioning. The potential is there but no one's seen your performance. Your actionable takeaway from this myth? Use credit cards responsibly. Pay off your balance in full each month, enjoy the rewards, and let those good habits reflect positively on your credit history. It's not about avoiding credit cards, it's about wielding them wisely, just like any other financial tool you have at your disposal. So, instead of treating credit cards like a financial outcast, let's welcome them into our toolkit with a healthy dose of respect and a solid understanding of how to use them to our advantage. All right, we've tackled some crucial myths so far, and if you're finding even a bit of value from this, do me a solid. Hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed. It keeps you informed and helps me continue to bring you content that makes a difference in your financial journey. Now that we've got that covered, let's dive into myth number four. Debt consolidation fixes everything. First off, what is debt consolidation? Essentially, it's a financial strategy where you combine multiple debts into one single debt, ideally with a lower interest rate. Think of it like putting all your debts into one basket and then making a single monthly payment. Sounds convenient, right? But hold on, it's not the magic wand it appears to be. Here's the myth. People think debt consolidation is an immediate solution to all their debt problems. Spoiler alert, it's not. The idea is alluring. You get to lump all your debts together, often at a reduced interest rate, making it easier to manage. But it doesn't solve the root issue, the behaviors and habits that led you into debt in the first place. Consider your debt as a leaky boat, Debt consolidation is akin to using a bigger bucket to bail out water. It might make the bailing process more efficient, but it doesn't plug the leak. If your spending habits remain the same, you're just delaying the inevitable. I had a friend who went down the consolidation route. He felt a sigh of relief and went out to celebrate. Ironically, the celebration put him right back into the cycle of debt. What he failed to realize is that real financial transformation starts after consolidation. It's the beginning of a new chapter where you must adopt responsible spending habits, create a budget, and work diligently to keep reducing that newly consolidated debt. So what's the takeaway? Debt consolidation can be a helpful tool, but it's not the ultimate fix. It's a step in the process, a tool in your toolbox. But the most important work lies in changing your habits and attitudes toward money and debt. Great, so we've demystified several misleading beliefs, but don't go anywhere just yet. We've got one more myth to tackle, and this one's a biggie. Myth number five, 
Having no debt is the ultimate financial goal. Hold on, you might be thinking, isn't the whole point of personal finance to be debt-free? Well, not exactly. Before you gasp in disbelief, let me explain. Debt, like fire, is a good servant but a bad master. When you're in control, it can help you achieve your financial goals. Whether it's a mortgage for your dream home, a student loan for education, or even a business loan to kickstart your entrepreneurial journey, debt can be a leverage tool that catapults you into opportunities you wouldn't otherwise have. The problem arises when people equate zero debt with financial freedom, thinking that the two are synonymous. The truth is, financial freedom is about control and choices, not just a zero balance on your debt sheet. Let's get real for a second. If you focus solely on paying off debt to the exclusion of all else, you might miss out on lucrative investment opportunities. Imagine you have a loan with a 3% interest rate, but there's an investment opportunity promising an 8% return. If you're laser-focused on eliminating debt, you could miss out on that potential 5% gain. I know someone who was so intent on paying off his low-interest mortgage as quickly as possible that he pumped every spare dollar into it. Sounds responsible, right? But here's the catch. He was so single-minded in his quest that he neglected other investment opportunities. He essentially put all his financial eggs in the real estate basket. When the housing market took a downturn, he realized the hard way that diversification is key. So what should you do? Balance is crucial. Of course, eliminate high-interest debt as quickly as possible. But when it comes to low-interest long-term loans, weigh your options carefully. Sometimes you're better off making regular payments while simultaneously investing in opportunities that offer higher returns. Remember, the end goal is financial freedom, not just being debt-free. To achieve that, you'll need a diversified portfolio, an emergency fund, and a strategy that takes into account both debts and investments. All right, folks, we've been on quite the journey today, slicing through myths and misconceptions like a hot knife through butter. If you're still here, first off, kudos for sticking around. Your financial IQ just went up a notch, and your future self is probably throwing a mini party in your honor. Financial freedom is, and sometimes leveraging debt wisely can actually get you there faster. Debt is not inherently good or bad. It's how you manage it that counts. And like any tool in your financial toolbox, it requires a nuanced understanding and strategic approach. If this video added value to your life, and I sincerely hope it did, please don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't already. Share this with anyone you think needs to hear it. And if you want more myth-busting and finance-transforming content, make sure you're subscribed. In closing, take this newfound knowledge and use it. Challenge societal norms, question the financial wisdom you've been fed, and take control of your debt narrative. Your road to financial freedom doesn't have to be a solo journey. We're in this together. So until next time, keep striving, keep thriving, and let's make financial freedom our reality.